So let's start. I'm going to talk to you about the KDE packages for SD that we have done for Package Hub. Uh, I suppose that you have been in the other Package Hub talks that have been in the in the conference, but uh, for this time, we are, I'm going to talk only about the KDE packages and about uh, the whole uh, process in order to get the KDE packages in Package Hub. So that might be a, a starting point for you if you want to also uh, collaborate with Package Hub and update, uh, submit your applications there. It will be uh, maybe an interesting talk for you. So let's start explaining who am I, because I suppose that most of you don't know me. At least I don't know most of you. So <laughs> I'm Antlar on IRC, uh, Antonio La Rosa on the real world. I've been a KDE developer since uh, 20 years ago. Uh, I've been a SUSE user since uh, 98, something like that. Uh, at that time, SUSE sent uh, DVDs to all KDE developers, so uh, I started using it at that time. Um, I've been a CLE user since uh, around 2004. Uh, in the previous company I worked for before coming to SUSE, uh, I used the SLE as a maintainer, as a uh, system administrator, and also developer, developed the applications for SLE. And I've been a SUSE developer, I've been working at SUSE for the last four years. And also for a bit longer than a year, around the year 2000. And currently I'm at the SLE desktop team. Okay. I, so I work most of the time with, uh, with GTK applications, but also with KDE applications on OpenSUSE. So how, this, this, uh, how did this uh, project begin about uh, uh, making KDE applications, KDE packages for SD? Well, mainly it started as a Hackweek project. I suppose that most of you who have worked in a Hackweek, uh, it also happened to you probably that uh, uh, the first day of the Hackweek, you still don't know what to do, and then <laughs> Talking with some people, they suggested that maybe it would be a good idea to make uh, KDE, KDE packages for SLE, and I thought, let's see, uh, there are KDE packages for OpenSUSE, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. I was wrong, okay? That's a spoiler of, uh, of the talk. <laughs> it uh, started in Hackweek 12, to be more precise. If you check the dates, I had to, I had to check it. It's around April 2015. So it's been a while now since uh, I started working on this. But uh, most of the work was actually done by the end of the year of, the, of 2015 and the beginning of 2016, OK? Uh, I worked, obviously, during the Hack Week, but uh, I was overwhelmed. There was a lot of work to, to be done, and it was uh, clear that it was not a project to be done in a week after, after I started. So in a sense, uh, this project has been kind of a guinea pig for, for Package Hub because we have been testing things before Package Hub was released. And I suppose it's not uh, wrong to say something like, like that, okay? So before beginning about uh, talking about uh, how this uh, is done, uh, probably I should talk about how KDE is structured in, into OBS. Um, I guess most of you already know, maybe, so I will probably go uh, faster on this. Uh, basically, um, we have uh, several projects for Qt, uh, Qt uh, packages. Uh, the main uh, project for that is KDE Qt 5, which is the double project for, uh, for Qt in factory. And then also we have Qt 5.6, Qt 5.7, and you know the progression, right? You see the pattern there. <laughs> um, okay. Then we also have uh, KDE projects. We have uh, split that into uh, Frameworks 5. There's a project, uh, KDE Frameworks 5, which includes right now Frameworks and Plasma packages. Mix it there. Also, we have KDE Frameworks 5 LTS, which is uh, the LTS version of Plasma. And uh, it includes a newer version of uh, Frameworks, but not so new as in KDE Frameworks 5. Uh, Personally, I think that we should also split that, but uh, probably that will happen in the next in the weeks, months. Uh, but uh, right now, Frameworks and Plasma are in the same project. Okay? And then we have KDE Applications, which is basically KDE Applications, <laughs> as the name says, uh, the software, uh, the, the applications for KDE. Then 
There's also uh, KDE Extra, which is uh, more applications for KDE that are not part of the KDE applications software compilation. Okay. And then we also have a kind of an obsolete project, which is KDE Distro Factory, which includes uh, KDE 4 packages, which are still in use. And f uh, with a little luck, we will stop using that soon, as soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Then we also have other projects in OBS for KDE which are the unstable projects, which uh, have the service to get the, oops, sorry, which have uh, the services to get the packages from JIT directly. Um, these are, as you see, something, something uh, clear. Qt frameworks, applications, and extra, and they are um, updated mostly every day. Okay? At sometimes even more than, most, more than once per day. So these are the base for uh, OpenSUSE uh, Krypton and Argon. Uh, those distributions take the, uh, the packages from these projects. So with so many projects to take uh, to base or, or, or SLE packages from, what should, we, what should we take? Well, basically, at the beginning, I uh, decided to go with KD 5.4.3, I think. But then, uh, when OpenSUSE uh, uh, Leap was released, then, uh, no, sorry, not when it was released, but when OpenSUSE Leap was updated, uh, I changed it and used it KDE 5.5.5. Okay. Basically, I used the devil project for factory, which uh, soon, well, not so soon, but I realized that that was kind of a, of a bad decision. And for the, when I was, uh, making the, application, the packages for SP2, for SD12 SP2, uh, I decided to go and just use directly the packages from lib, from lib 42.2, okay? Because uh, the 42.2 packages for, from KDE were, uh, there was a lot of time invested into those packages, and it, was, it would be a pity not to, to use them. Okay. So, basically, uh, at the beginning, I used uh, these uh, this projects as, as, a, as a base. And if we count the packages that are in each of these projects, then we see that there are quite a few packages there in each of the projects. And if we sum them, we see that there are nearly 1,000 packages there. Of course, not all of them are currently in Package Hub. There are many packages that uh, either not, it, they don't make sense in Nestle, like, for example, uh, Discover or some of those App Store applications that use uh, newer uh, package kit uh, dependencies and which, uh, well, SLE users usually don't want to use uh, App Stores for that. Okay? There are also uh, not so common applications that uh, don't make sense on, on enterprise. Also games, for example. Uh, also, I included a few games, just in case. <laughs> And well, at the end, basically, uh, we put into Package Hub something like 350, 400 uh, packages. Okay. So we already know what to base our project on, and then I started building everything, and first problems arise. Some of the libraries that uh, we were using. Um, OBS couldn't, couldn't resolve the dependencies. I mean, I had a project in which I built, let's see, let's say, uh, Qt5, Qt5 base, Qt5 base. And then when I was going to build another application or, the, or, or another library that depended on that, OBS simply said that the, the dependency was unresolved. And it was in the same project and it was this was, what the fuck, <laughs> okay? It was a kind of a strange situation. Well, it turns out that KDE uses dependencies like uh, with uh, capabilities instead of like using package names. Not all of them, but in many cases it uses uh, dependencies like, like that. And RPM, RPM in SLE wasn't uh, creating the provides for those libraries, okay? So the solution was a simple once the problem was, uh, was uh, stated, was uh, known, and only including a CMake RPM macro file from factory into the C uh, CMake uh, package in SLE, 
and it was solved, and we had, we had all the capabilities included into the packages. Okay. So, we have a problem with uh, packages missing in C12. There are many packages that, are, that were <laughs> uh, mainly missing there, the, the one there, and then there, are, there were other packages that are, were too old. Maybe I should say too stable, because they were not updated, uh, with respect to factory, of course. But uh, in any case, I needed newer things, and I needed uh, things that weren't there. So I learned about uh, BSK the hard way, because uh, uh, sincerely, I didn't even knew that uh, was something. <laughs> and it turns out that packages that are uh, in SLE sometimes are used to build other packages but are not included into the distribution. So that was uh, what's happening there. And fortunately, uh, well, I got in touch with Adrian Schroeder, with uh, um, uh, Leonardo Chiquito, and other uh, developers who helped me and moved the applications to OBS so that I could use them around there. Okay. So afterwards, uh, well, this I think that I've already been explaining in other in other talks. RPM Lint complained that uh, many packages that I was building uh, interfere with other packages that were already into SLE. Um, believe it or not, I mean, even if uh, it was only interfering with one package that was used to build on other packages but were not released, then it didn't matter. I mean, I couldn't build that package, and RPM Lint complained, and the, the building of the package stopped. So, I, it resulted out I couldn't build ber new versions of Qt, of course. And you have to remember that SLE 12 used uh, Qt 5.3.1, and even SP1 still used 5.3.2, which uh, is a very old uh, Qt version. But fortunately, uh, Max, who I don't know if around here, Max Lin, uh, backported a lot of patches from upstream into Qt. He really did a great job, and, and those versions were good enough for us. Okay. But there were also other packages, like CMake, which was very old. Uh, KDLibs 4 was included. I mean, it's not in, in the distribution, but it's in BSK. Libkipi, FFmpeg, Mesa, LLVM. There were all versions of that, of those packages, and something had to be done. So, uh, as I said, no package in, in, in Package Hub can have the same name or include a file that is already included in any package in SLE. So that might look like a, like a problem for us if we, are wanting, if we want to, to create a package, but it actually makes sense for, for users, and we have to think of users, so <laughs> we, have to, uh, we have to find a solution that works for us. So the main solution for this is to patch the package in SLE and include any feature that we need from the later, from the newer version, okay? To backport uh, things, I should have said that. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, also it's possible to force RPM lint to ignore the error and whitelist the package and so that it could continue. Of course, this is not a long-term solution. This is only a solution in order to continue building and continue working while, while the, the problem, the real problem, was fixed. Okay? Uh, this, is, uh, this was done because uh, if, I could, if I would have had to uh, stop for every package that had this problem, then I would still be building KD packages. Okay? This, uh, uh, this way, I could continue working with other packages while someone else was fixing these this applications. So, another problem. Problem was the Wayland problem. It turns out uh, KDE at that time required Wayland 1.3, but SLE 12 only had 1.2. So, probably you are wondering now, is, wait, SLE 12 used Wayland? Well, the answer is, of course, no. Okay, but it was used to build other packages, as I said before. So the solution in this case was to patch Wayland and uh, include some 
quite a few patches from, from upstream. And yeah, it got there and it will find, so could continue. Also, some other, uh, some other problem that I have was with Akonadi. I have, I am showing you here a small selection of the problems that we have, but many more. <laughs> but uh, in this case, for example, Akonadi had a special requirement for SQLite 3, which was uh, some support for unlock notify interface, which uh, can only be enabled at compile time. So the solution was easy to do, but uh, it's also another change that we had to do in SLE in order to, to support this. Then Python SIP. Python SIP, uh, as included in, in SLE 12, which was the version uh, 4.15.4, wasn't enough. And in order to build uh, Python Q5 uh, bindings, we needed some features from 4.15. So these are the list of, of, of features that we needed. And basically, I just have to backport all of them. Uh, fortunately, uh, Python SIP is not very used on SLE. So it was mainly used only to build the Qt4 bind, uh, bindings. And the Qt4 bindings are only used by two, two packages, FFAO Mixer and HPLib in, in SLE. So I tested the packages and saw that it, they work. They worked fine, and we could go on. So we reached a point in which uh, lib 42.2 was released, and sorry, it included a plasma, I think, 5.4 something. And in the update, in the maintenance uh, updates, it was upgraded to 5.5.5. So. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, we haven't released anything yet for package hub, so I thought, let's upgrade it, why not? Um, there are many um, problems that are already fixed. It should be quite more straightforward, right? So the problem was that uh, this update brought, out, brought new dependencies, <laughs> and for example, the Wayland problem returned, and this time KD required uh, Wayland 1.7, which is a long leap from uh, 1.2, which one was still uh, provided by SLE. So, well, SLE SP1 included Wayland? No, of course, it didn't. But the solution was to backport even more uh, patch, patches from upstream. At the end, I think I got something like 20 something patches from upstream in order to, to build everything. So it was quite a, quite a lot of work. Uh, the problem, by the way, in case you're wondering uh, why KDE needs Wayland if KDE still doesn't use Wayland even in lib or in factory, uh, the problem is that there, well, not a problem, but the thing is that uh, there is a, a dependency in KWIN uh, on some Wayland libraries that it uses internally to work, even in X11. So the Wayland uh, libraries have to be there. Okay. So another problem was uh, the SLE branding packages, because uh, as you know, SLE has a different branding from OpenSUSE. And so I couldn't use the Plasma 5 OpenSUSE branding uh, packages. And I, uh, what I did was uh, to create a new Plasma 5 SLE branding packages, which uh, were, of course, based on the OpenSUSE ones. But I changed the backgrounds with the standard SLE backgrounds. I changed the splash screens. Uh, to include more SUSE, uh, SUSE logo type, logos, and this kind of things, right? Okay. So basically, we reached to a point in which uh, we could test some things. Okay. And we found out that there were missing binaries. I mean, everything built fine. Uh, all the dependencies were there when building, but uh, when the user wanted, wanted to install the, the system, there was uh, some dependencies that uh, weren't available for him because he's not using OBS, of course. So there were packages in OBS that were not available for the users. For example, that's a small list of them. As you see, it's not only Qt5 uh, packages, the Qt5 modules, but also uh, Glue, also LMDB, also Flack even, and some other libraries. In, those, in some cases, 
Some of those libraries were available for a SLE desktop, but not for a SLE server. In other cases, some of those packages were available for a SLE server, but not for a SLE desktop. In other cases, they were not available for any of them. <laughs> and well, uh, it had to be worked on, which also took time. <laughs> so, the KD packages finally arrived for SP1 after more than a year in July uh, last year. And I thought, OK, this time SP2 won't catch me off guard, and I will be prepared. So uh, together with Max, we upgraded uh, uh, Qt in SP2 for, uh, to the LTS version, to 5.6.1, which is a nice upgrade. And it also uh, allowed us to remove many patches that were backported and just use the, the LTS version, which is easier to, man easier to maintain. Um, so that's, that's very nice. Also, I got rid of the Wayland problem, and I said, OK, let's upgrade Wayland to 1.11, and that will solve everything. At least the Wayland problem, not everything. <laughs> uh, I didn't do this, but it was uh, nice that someone else did. I don't know if you are here. Thank you. Uh, someone else upgraded CMake to 3.5.2. Uh, also, that helped uh, a lot, because um, uh, there were many packages in, in KDE which were requiring a newer version of CMake. In some cases, there was a, a silly dependency that uh, if we removed it, Basically, it worked. There was nothing else to be done. Done. Just remove the dependency. But in other cases, uh, there were, there were, it was still it was really required. Okay. So uh, as I said, uh, it wouldn't catch me off guard, but actually it did. Okay. <laughs> because uh, I didn't thought at that time about the problem with uh, the internal API usage of some Q, uh, some KDE applications. Some KDE applications and libraries use uh, internal API from Qt because they need to use it. And, and well, uh, this means that the KDE applications like as unimportant as uh, KWIN, the window manager, or Plasma, just require a specific version of Qt. I mean, they don't, you cannot upgrade Qt uh, without the recompiling, rebuilding, and reinstalling the KDE applications. So that was a problem because uh, there were many users using SLE, SLE 12 SP1 with the KDE packages, and when they upgraded to SP2, basically their desktop stopped working. Okay. Also, uh, the KDE look changed quite a bit, and uh, many configuration files changed places. They changed the format. Uh, the QML files that define the look also changed a lot. And this means that uh, the uh, OpenSUSE branding was changed. And I was basically using some script to change the, the brandings from OpenSUSE to SLE. And this script stopped working. So this meant a lot of work that had to be done also. And this time, I, I said, OK, most of the dependency problems are already solved, actually, in SP2. These are, OK, thanks. Uh, so just use the lib42.2 packages that, as I said before, were much nicer. So this means that we upgraded in the SP2 uh, change, uh, we upgraded frameworks, we upgraded Plasma. Even in, during the SP2 maintenance, I upgraded to 5.8.6. Uh, we upgraded some applications. So can you use Plasma in, uh, in SE? I'm going faster because uh, I've been told that uh, my time is finishing, okay? So don't ask for information. Just use it. Okay, just do it. You only, you, the only thing you have to do is register your SUSE product, your SLE uh, system, enable the package hub extension and the SDK. Actually, I'm not sure if SDK is actually needed, but it doesn't matter if you enable it. And then do zipper install pattern uh, KDE. Okay, only that will install a whole KDE desktop in your SLE system which is installed, installing around 450 new packages and around 300 megabytes. Okay? It's quite a few packages, but uh, it's worth it. <laughs> so the idea when you, after you install it is that you get this uh, GDM version, this GDM screen, sorry. Then in the gear box next to sign in, you have to click it, and then a pop-up appears where you select Plasma, and then Log, you log in and you get into 
Will it work? Of course. You get into your plasma desktop, which, as you see, is very similar to the genome desktop in sleep, because uh, I'll try to make it as similar as possible. Will SDDM work? In fact, I talked with uh, Scott a few days ago, ago about that, because I thought it didn't, but actually it did, it that, sorry, it does. <laughs> uh, I tried it uh, these days in a, in a virtual machine for a SLEE desktop and for a SLEE server, and actually it works quite well. Uh, as you see, basically it's the, the same uh, GDM meaning, the same GDM look. GDM look, only you have to change the etc sysconfig display manager and change GDM with SDDM. And as you see, the look is very similar. The only known issue is that uh, the shutdown button just locks out from your, from your session. So the, all, the solution is easy, just do an extra click on your display manager and shut down just the system from there. So there are already KDE packages for this package hub. Just use them. And this is not a KDE issue. Uh, there are many KDE dependencies that were included in package hub thanks to this. So I think, and I hope at least, that uh, many other projects uh, get easier into package hub thanks to this. And I would like to thank all these people for helping to get, into, uh, to get the packages into package hub. So I don't know if uh, we have time for questions. No? Nope. OK. So thank you.